uh, on their product. So he's going to give us a great update looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can everyone hear me all right? Um, as he said, my name is David O'Toole from McHale Engineering. I'm the North American service rep here for our company. Um, I'm sure, well, I hope some of you have heard of us already anyway over here over the last few years. Um, we're mainly a grassland machinery company. Started off with the um, wrappers you can see up here in the top corner. Um, we progressed then to balers and rakes and mowers and tethers in the last, uh, coming into tethers now in the next, couple, next coming year. Um, it's a family owned company. Started off by two brothers, um, Martin and Porrick. Uh, started off as just two farmers, like everyone else here. Um, the conditions in Europe were getting a lot worse. The balers were getting, uh, the crop was getting a lot wetter, so the balers weren't able to handle it, the wrappers weren't able to handle it. Um, you're looking at a machine every season, which obviously wasn't cost effective, for number one, but uh, reliability was the biggest problem that we had. So the two brothers actually sat down and said, listen, I'm sure we can build a machine to last more than one season. Um, that's where sort of the company started. Um, as I said, there's two brothers um, who started the company. They're still um, heavily involved in the company. Martin is over uh, sales all over the world, and Porik, uh, his older brother, is over research and development. So any little bolt, nut, washer that's changed in a machine or anything like that all goes through him. Uh, there isn't anything that's changed in any machine, any new lines, any products or anything that does not go through him first. Um, at the minute, we have two production plants. We have one in Ballinrobe in the west of Ireland. Uh, that's where the company started. Um, all our research and development, all our new products uh, is all done from Ireland. We have about 10 to 15 percent of our full workforce that is solely dev uh, devoted to research and development. Um, we also have another plant in Hungary, where it's an exact replica of the factory in Ireland, just a bit smaller and no research and development. So everything is done from Ireland and just, let's say, instructions sent over the water. Um, between the two places, we have about 600 employees. Factory is putting through about 600 ton of steel um, per week through where it goes there to cutting with all the latest technology with lasers, robot welders, through a multi-million euro paint plant that we put in in 2015, where all our steel is powder coated and properly treated before it goes to the assembly line. Um, we do try to get roughly about 20% growth every year. That's between new markets, new countries, um, and new product lines, because if you just stick with the products you have, you're just going to bury yourself into the ground and everyone else is going to come up and take over. Um, we're in a roughly 60 plus countries around the world. Um, for such a relatively young company, um, you see it started off with a used equipment lot in 1976, where the two brothers just had second-hand machines and were trading back and over. Um, Obviously, as I said, they're two farmers that came from countryside, a small little 120-acre uh, farm that they inherited from their father. Um, our market with the farm machinery um, is very different to what you see from here in the States from a McHale side. We've, fairly, uh, we've taken over the market. In Ireland, we roughly have about 95% when it comes to balers and wrappers. Uh, in Europe, it's down to about 75, 70, 75%. So it was a bit of a shock when I came over here a few years ago and I had to explain what McHale was. <laughs> but um, as you can see, there's about $90 billion um, dollars per annum is the, in the global machinery market, and hay equipment is about 7% of that. Um, North America and Western Europe are definitely the most sophisticated markets. They're, the technology is um, a lot higher than, we'll say, in Eastern Europe and Asia. So we had to push our product to be a lot more efficient, um, to keep up with the latest technology, um, and keep with the trends that machines were going to, the likes of Isobus and things like that for tractors. Uh, being an independent company was 
a bit more difficult because we had to adapt our Isable system to every other tractor, where the likes of a tractor manufacturer can just focus on his own. So, but that was the trend, that's what people wanted, so the guys in R&D have pushed that and it's been very successful for us so far. Um, market started off in Ireland, um, went then to the, our neighbours in the UK, the United Kingdom. Uh, in 1995 we started importing wrappers, mainly into the United, United States. And in the last, we'll say, five years, our variable chamber baler has really taken off for us over here. Um, when we st uh, over in Europe, it be, would be predominantly fixed chamber four by four balers. So the belt baler market for us was definitely a challenge to get the product to be what it needs to be. Um, now in Europe, it is going, uh, there's a lot more countries using variable chamber for the likes of hay and straw. So they can make their bigger bales and that, but for silage and haylage production, it's nearly all fixed chambers. So it was a learning curve for us. Um, that's why McHale's have always sent reps all around the world to deal with the customers, the machines in the field, uh, to get the feedback to make our product as best as it can be. Um, so in 1991, is when we properly brought out the first trailed wrapper into production. Um, very standard machine, very simple machine to work, but it was built heavy. It was built to last the harder conditions that we were starting to see around Europe, the heavier bales, the heavier crops. Uh, then we branched out to square bale, big square bale wrappers, and we had the 995 there in the corner, which would do both. Um, obviously, McHale started making a name for themselves then for being heavier equipment. Um, stronger, stronger machines, better quality parts. Um, so then a lot of people started asking us to go into the baler market. In 2002, we did come into the baler market, but a bit backwards, because we actually brought out a combination machine before we ever brought out a fixed chamber baler or a single standalone baler. Um, the reason for that was, again, the weather was starting to come against us a lot worse. So we had a lot more wetter days, wetter years, um, where we couldn't really leave the grass laying down um, far too long. We hadn't very big windows. We still don't for our season. It could start in, we'll say the start of May and finish up in the end of September, but you might only get two months in the middle of that max where you can actually cut and produce grass without tearing the fields apart. So efficiency was really what the McHale guys were looking for to stand out from everybody else. Um, that's why they went to the combination machine first. And that's really where McHale started to explode in the baler market or in the grassland market. As you can see, you now we have a range of single fixed chamber balers, our variable chamber balers, and we have three combination units, uh, two fixed chambers and one variable chamber. In 2014, uh, we actually, in 1998, we started out with just this part here in the factory. That's where all our cutting, welding, uh, painting, and assembly was done. But because of the expansion of the company in such a short time, in 2014, we ended up putting on this extension out the front. Um, this center section was a multi-million euro KTL dipping paint plant that was put in, and then the whole back area was our full assembly hall. Um, with the progression of the machines, the progression of the market in such a short time, it was actually three times we had to expand that place from when we moved in first. And there's talks about expanding it again. On to the machines themselves. We've started now with, in the last, in 2015, we brought out our mowers. Um, we went with what was the going trend, what was the way the machines were going. I know over here and in Ireland, we'll say up to, or in Europe about 10 years, up to about 10 years ago, we were predominantly trailed mowers. Um, everybody had a trail mower, no one really wanted to look at a mounted mower. But because it was heavy, it was extra horsepower that you needed. But the way that things are going now, all tractors in Europe are getting bigger. Uh, custom guys, contractors, they're taking on a lot more work um, in a lot, and they need it to be done in a lot shorter time frame. 
So as you can see, our front mower here, it's mounted on the front three point linkage in the front of the tractor, ran off the PTO, and then we go to us, we have a single rear mount, and we have our butterfly mowers. This seems to be the most common way that uh, custom operators are going in this day and age in Europe, because they have, number one, they have the bigger tractors for doing all your different jobs, your baling, your plowing, your seeding, your disking, um, they the one tractor to do everything. And because our window is so short, uh, we need to have, to be as fast and as efficient as possible. So cutting 30 foot of grass um, with one tractor is a hell of a lot better than sending out three tractors with three trail mowers trying to do the same job. Um, you have a lot less cost on fuel, you have a lot less um, cost on maintenance. Um, and you only need to have the one good operator. You don't have to be worried about other guys in the seat. So all our mowers are coming um, standard with quick change blades, 10 foot cutter bar beds, and steel tine flail conditioners. I know that can be kind of a curse word when you're talking about alfalfa over here, but uh, because our gearboxes on our mowers are running two speeds, we have 1,700. All around Europe, everybody that's cutting alfalfa would go with the 700 speed, and they wouldn't see a big loss on leaves or quality of the crop. But we do cut it as well a lot shorter. As you can see there, and even our grass uh, that we're cutting, we do cut it very short, very leafy, but it's very, very dense crop too. Um, like you, that's a standard, let's say, crop in Ireland, but it's probably second cut there between uh, this year, especially we've seen with the weather that we've had, we've been getting between 16, 17 to 20, 22 bales per acre. And they'd be 25, 2600 pounds, four by four bales. So it's not like it's just the small marshmallow bales that you think over here with the, with the four foot chamber. Yes, all haylage, silage bales. Uh, it's very rare that we would get the weather for uh, dry hay in Ireland. Uh, we've then gone to our rake range. We have two models, um, all center delivery rotary, rotary rakes. Um, it's easier on the, it makes a lot more uniform row uh, than, we'll see, we'll see, than we've seen in Europe, than uh, we'll say the likes of your wheel rakes. Um, it's a lot easier on the crop. It doesn't damage the crop as much. It doesn't um, turn it and wind it all up into a rope, we'll say. Um, we, the reason we have the two models is with the with the how heavy our crops would be. Um, we have the 6272, which would be a 24 foot rake. That would be for taking in, we'll say, two heavy 10 foot rows for your baler. And then we have the 6878, which would be a 27 foot rake. And that would be the likes for your three 10 foots for your self propelled forager or something like that. Um, the Fusion machine is obviously our flagship at the minute. Um, we sell more combination machines than, we sell twice as much combination machines than all of our um, competitors put together. So Mikhail has really made their name from this. And as you can see here, we've gone to our NRF system in, inside in the chamber of the bale, which is net replacement film. Um, the thing is with net, when you're baling, net doesn't really do anything for your bale. Uh, when we're talking about silage quality and haylage quality, uh, net doesn't do anything but hold it together until it's wrapped. We've gone to the NRF system because when the NRF goes into the chamber, it actually shrinks your bale and tightens it a lot more, so it actually pushes the air out. For silage or haylage preservation, you need the three main things you need, moisture, sugar, and no air. So your moisture has to be correct, you have to have the correct sugar in the likes of your alfalfa, your grass is, the whole lot. And no air, it has to be airtight. The tighter the bale is, the less air that's in it, the better quality fermentation you're going to have out of it. A net replacement film. Um, so as well as that, um, instead of putting your eight to 10 layers on the back of your, on your bale when you're individually wrapping, like a lot of other countries would, especially up in Northern Europe, they'd have to put 10 to 12 layers on because of the harsh conditions that they get in the wintertime. 
how cold it gets. It can get down to, I think it was minus 60 Fahrenheit that they'd get down there and that would penetrate through the plastic. So that's why they have to put on so much. But because of the net replacement film on the bale, you're already starting out with four layers on the bale. And each end, when you're individually wrapping bales, each end is always going to have twice as much plastic because it has to go around it twice, uh, twice as often to get that coverage. So with the film, you're actually getting a lot more plastic coverage on the bale as well. So if you're moving the bales or selling the bales or anything like that, it's a lot more protection that's on it, um, as well as having a lot better fermentation quality and a lot better feed value out of it. Um, all our machines are fitted with um, knives as well. So our, in our intake here in the throat, when we're taking the crop in, we're running all hydraulically operated knives, which can be lifted or dropped from the cab. But the whole advantage of having knives is, number one, you put a lot more silage or grass into the bale. And number two, it'll release, that, uh, it'll release the sugars out of the bale during fermentation which will get you a lot sweeter, a lot more palatable crop for your cattle. Um, the other thing, the machines are all fitted with drop floors as well. So if it is a case that you come into a very bad row and I don't know, either something's stuck in the row like a rake tine or a rake arm or you have a big lump of crop that blocks up the machine, all the machines are actually fitted with drop floors. So you press a button in the cab and it drops out the floor. Start up your PTO again, take in your lump or whatever lift your floor and away you go again. Instead of getting down on your hands and knees and pulling for a couple hours trying to unblock it. Um, this would be the biggest market that we would have in the US at the minute. Our variable chamber baler range. Um, in 2015, would that be right? 2015 we started bringing over. Uh, 2015, 2016 we started bringing over our variable chamber range over here. Um, because McHale was sort of an unknown manufacturer over here, there was a few guys that were hesitant to take us on. But the only way that we've actually came up as far as we have uh, over here now is getting the machines into the field. They're built, obviously, for the real harsh, heavy, wet conditions that's in Europe for taking crop, um, taking um, heavy crop, heavy wet crop in very bad conditions. They're built a lot heavier, like that baler there is weighing over nine and a half thousand pounds when it's sitting on its own, which is probably a third heavier than most of our competitors, but to, um, most of our competitors' machines. <coughs> um, the same thing, the machine has hydraulic operated knives uh, in underneath it, uh, in the throat of the baler for taking in the crop, um, hydraulic drop floor. Uh, we're running all two inch double race SKF bearings all around the chamber. So you can know they're built heavy, they're built strong for the conditions. And the whole reason for that is, instead of having your balers lasting 10, 12,000 bales and having to be fully rebuilt, we've seen a lot of these balers go up on the 100,000 bale mark without having major catastrophes, without having major rebuilds or anything like that. Um, and again, that's for your efficiency, to keep the machine going longer, keep your reliability up. Um, because in the farming operation, I, it's, I know it's the same all over the world. Time is the biggest thing that you run out of. Um, so downtime is costing you an awful lot of money. So you need a machine that's going to last, going to keep going as hard as you're able to push it. Um, that's why our machines can be bailing faster for longer with heavier crops and not have these big problems. Like there's many, many guys around here running these machines 10, 12 mile an hour in the field and having no problems whatsoever still putting out very good, strong, heavy bales. Um, the other thing with our, that we've brought out in the last two years with our V6 range is one single belt. Um, the, there's a couple of reasons for that. For a newer driver, it's actually a bit easier to drive because it wouldn't um, run uh, to one side or the other um, if you're filling your crop on one side. But the biggest advantage is for the likes of you guys, the whole reason you're here, the alfalfa, you have next to zero crop loss. All your leaves are retained inside in the bale until the bale is netted and put out. So the difference between that and you, um, obviously there's no gaps in it. So if you had your six or your eight belts and different competitors' balers, it's obviously a lot of room for the crop, especially if you're in a lighter crop, 
and it's taking you a lot longer to make a bale because with that crop turning inside in that chamber, uh, it'll be like a mashing effect. So a lot of the time you would have a lot of leaves, a lot of protein, a lot of that stuff, the good, best stuff in your crops while you're growing it, lost out at the bottom of the baler. So that's another huge advantage. And most of our importers are actually going, I think this year was about 60% of all our variable chamber machines did come with the single belt for that reason. Um, on to individually wrapping bales. I know a lot of people over here are fairly used to uh, wrapping in a tube style or with a tube style wrapper. In Ireland and Europe, that's unheard of. And the main reason for that is we don't actually have the area to have 150 bales lined up in a tube. <laughs> a lot of our fields could only be five, six, seven acres. Um, and we need to use every single bit of it that we have. That'd be one, probably a lot of the main reason for it, but a lot of, uh, custom operators in Ireland would, or any around Europe, they would uh, make an awful lot of hay for themselves and sell it. Haylage and silage, they would sell an awful lot of it. That would be a big income for their operation. So um, it makes it a lot easier for transport, for moving, um, and for stacking them in the yards. So we'd usually stack them three, four high in a small corner where you'd get four or five hundred bales. You'd wouldn't get 50 bales lined down with a tube style. So that's sort of the main reason why we don't operate in that area. But the wrapper that you see here, it's the Michaela Orbital Wrapper. It's been tried and tested practically since 2002 because it's the exact same system that we're running on our combination machines. Um, again, fully automatic machine. All you have to do is drive into the bale. As soon as the bale sits here on your loading arm, machine does everything else itself. So. Another thing is operator, for an operator standpoint, you could put anybody up in it, as long as they could drive alongside a bale, you could stick anybody up in it. Um, very fast machine too, because of the wrapping ring, it's actually the plastic that's doing all the work, not the bale. So we can actually spin this a hell of a lot faster than you could a standard table wrapper, because a table wrapper, if you spin it too fast, there's a tendency of firing the bale off. Um, but again, very fast machine. It's going in the same direction as the baler is traveling, so you wouldn't have to cross over rows. Um, again, just a lot more efficient in running behind the machine. Um, it can handily keep up to two single balers in the field. As you can see, four layers in 18 seconds or six layers in 24 seconds. We just have a little video now of just the product ranges that we have. Um, our most popular machines. We've had a bit of technical difficulty, so we have to swap laptops for this. But um, I'll just have a quick talk through the machines um, as they're playing through. Um, as I said, time is obviously the most important thing in farming. We can never depend on the weather. You can never be too sure what's going to happen. So the likes of our combination machine, it takes a second tractor for wrapping, a second operator, second fuel cost, uh, and a second maintenance cost out of it. You've only the one guy baling and wrapping. Uh, as soon as the crop comes into the chamber, everything is automatic after that. Yeah, fire away. You can turn off the music if you want. Um, the crop comes into the chamber and the machine, Everything is automatic after that. So the machine knows when the bale is getting full, it'll tell you to stop. All you have to do is stop the tractor. It will put on the plastic or the NRF or your net. These machines will run net as well, I forgot to mention. Um, it'll transfer the bale itself. As soon as that chamber door in the back closes, you're good to go again. And the wrapper will automatically wrap behind it with whatever amount of layers of plastic you have it set to. Uh, automatically drop it off when you go to net, net uh, the next bale. So having the one guy, having the one operation makes it a hell of a lot quicker for guys to get the bigger bale counts in the day. Um, as I said, we'd have the 16 to 22, 23 bales per acre fields at home. So a lot of these machines are running up on five, six, seven hundred bales a day. Um, the, with the chopping units that we have in these machines, 
Um, most of our combination machines are coming with, with 25 knives, which are selectable. So you can raise a bank of 12, a bank of 12, uh, 13, or all 25. And the whole reason behind that, again, is to keep going longer. After your three, 400 bales, or depends how abrasive your crop is, um, your knives are obviously going to be very dull, and which will put a hell of a lot more strain on the machine. Um, on the tractor side of it, it'll, a lot more fuel costs, a lot more horsepower needed to drive it. So just from a press of a button, the operator can drop 12 knives and lift the second set of sharpened 13 knives and keep going. Um, this has been the flagship for us. This is what has set us apart from everybody else. Because of the short chassis on the machine, uh, the way our wrapping system is designed and our transfer system is the main thing. You can see here, once the bale is transferred, it's actually the bottom end of the chamber that's flicking the bale onto the wrapping table. So that's why we can make the transfer system so short, so quick, um, and so effective in it. Very, very reliable machine, has been since 2002, since we first brought it out. <coughs> um, as I said, you can run the net as well through it instead of the plastic if you, if you want to, but the plastic seems to be a lot uh, better for the quality of forage that comes out when you're feeding in the wintertime. These are single a uh, range of single fixed chamber balers, all four by four bales. Uh, we have a non-chopper, a 50 knife semi-automatic, and a 25 knife fully automatic machine. Um, all these machines, again, are fitted with uh, either selectable knives or standard straight knives, uh, and drop floors in them. Uh, one thing about these machines is the research and development guys uh, that's there in the factory in Ballinrobe, Every one of them come from a farming background. So they're not just guys sitting on a computer telling you this is what you have to do. These are guys that are coming out, listening to the likes of me, coming out with the likes of me, seeing what the problem is. If there's a part they have to change, they'll draw it up, they'll cut it, weld it, fit it to the machine, bring the machine out and see how it, te how it tests in the field. So they have first-hand knowledge exactly how it's working. Um, same thing since we brought out our orbital range uh, from, we'll say, the 991 range, where we first came out with. Um, it's been the same thing. Every engineer sits up, writes the software for it, um, changes a part in it, changes a feature in it. Every one of them stand up, um, go out, make the part, fit it to the machine, um, sit up in the tractor and run the machine as well. Um, Oh, my mind just went blank. Um, for which, the combination machines? Uh, well, the most horsepower you'd need would be for the mowers, running 30 foot of mowers. Uh, for the balers, for the combination machines, you'd be looking around 150 horse. As separate, the single machines, you'd be looking in around 100, 100 120, 115. Plenty of power to run them. Because we're running, we're actually running split drive gearboxes as well on all the machines. So half your power is diverted to your pickup and half your power is diverted to your chamber. So it's a lot easier to run it on the tractor itself. Um, the only thing you need for the likes of these machines and the combination machines is a good oil flow. Good quality oil flow. That's one thing that we have ran into, but we have kits to overcome that, we'll say, from your older tractors. We would have a good few... Um, Combination machines running on the likes of 44, 40 John Deere's, 48, 50s and that. The only problem we did come into was hydraulics, but we had a kit that we actually changed on the machine to compensate for that. So it, they do look like sort of complicated machines when you look at them first and you'll see the operation of them, but they're all very, very simple. All the electronics on it, most of them are just controlled by proximity sensors, seeing a, seeing a target in front of it. Uh, most of them are interchangeable on most of the machines. So again, if you ever get down, if you're stuck in a field with a sensor gun, you could rob it from a different part of the machine and keep going. Again, back to time efficiency, trying to keep things going for longer and longer. Um, as I said, this is here is just the variable chamber version of the combination machine. Um, but as I said, you can see how heavy the machines are built. Um, they're using the best parts. We're using 100 heavy diamond chains, American chains. They're the best chains in the market. We've tested them all. Uh, SKF bearings the same way. They're the best bearings that we have found have tested on the market. Just again, to keep everything going, to keep everything flowing smoother 
and to get up on your 100,000, 150,000 bail counts on your machines. Um, then onto the likes of your straw blowers, your C460 here, it's um, just a straw processor which can be used to feed silage as well. Um, people have found, especially around Europe, the guys who have gone to, will say, busting a bale in the middle of a pin and shaking it out to a straw blower, you'll use about 55 to 60% less straw when you're using one of these machines, um, which is obviously cost effective on one side, but a hell of a lot cleaner for the cattle as well um, that you're bedding into. A uh, machine can be used for silage and haylage as well, feeding um, as well. Practically anything can be put through them. I've had lads put pallets and all that sort of stuff through them as well, which I wouldn't recommend, but it does it. <laughs> um, again, back to our mowers. You can see when we were, pro when we were producing these mowers, when we were uh, developing them, uh, flotation was one of the biggest things we had to look at because there's such a wide uh, variancy of mowers out there, a lot of manufacturers building mowers. We had to make sure that we had the best of the best out there. So we had an awful lot of research and development put into it, um, bringing out prototype machines, testing them. We had machines sent over here, test them all around the country to make sure they'd last in different conditions. Um, and we had to make sure they were as strong, as durable as the rest of the McHale machinery because if it was one, you bring out one bad machine and it can destroy your name for the whole rest of your product, no matter how well you've done. And again, back to the two brothers at the start of it, started it, it's their name that's on the side of every single machine. So they could never have it, have cheapening up parts or cutting corners in development or anything like that because it's them two that are the face of the, the, the company. They started it. The brothers are actually over here for Louisville show nearly every year. So it goes to show that they still have such care for their own product over here across the seas. Uh, while the, that video is finishing up playing, I might actually just introduce a friend and colleague of mine, uh, Jody Watson. Works for the, one of the importers, one of the five importers we have over here. Um, he's, obviously, he's just a farmer himself, and I might just get him to give a couple of words on how the McHale machines and, uh, has changed his own farming operation in his area, in his own farm. deal with 40 different manufacturers and we distribute to all the dealerships out here. You probably see a lot of our products, whether it be a soup line wrapper, whether it be an NDE uh, bail mixer, uh, processor, mixer mixer, uh, four scanner wagons, so on and so forth. We sell a lot of different things. The one thing that we have found is the tail. Um, we're fairly new with the tail in that 15, 16 small orders that we're on. Um, they're one of the few companies, I have to say, that the owners are still the guy you pick up the phone and talk to. The owners still want to know what's going on. The owner wants to be involved in, we had, we had some guys wanting some certain knives, uh, longer wear, that type of thing. Uh, call it taller and taller. I don't want to put it off with a knife manufacturer, let's make this one work. Um, you know, those days are gone pretty much in our world. So, uh, what we deal with is pretty much corporation type type stuff. This is one of the few that's not, that has the capability to do just about anything they want. Uh, it's been very it's been very enlightening from our side of it to see a company that the, the owner cares, the guys that work for them truly care what you think. At the end of the day, if it doesn't work and it doesn't run right, they're not happy. Uh, that's what I've been most impressed with the tail with is is they care what quality crop you put up because it matters to me. Uh, that's what I have seen. They, they build a, a world of equipment uh, and something that really fits our market well. As far as alfalfa goes, as far as uh, a lot of you guys do a lot of different different forages, not just alfalfa. Uh, 
there's probably one on that. For instance, there's eight probably combinations running in <coughs> Western Kentucky, that type of world. And then that, um, there, anywhere from Western to Southern Central, there's like uh, three, I believe, in Eastern Kentucky running uh, of a combination machine. What, what we're seeing, and, and pretty much they ask us, hey, what? Come talk to us about things or changes that are happening in the equipment business. Number one, you can't get ahead, right? You can't buy it. You can do, you can't afford it. Well, we all know. Well, it's, it's $15 an hour, $20 an hour, $25 an hour. You, know, you can't afford that and make it in business. We all know that. That's why we like y'all. So, number one, we got to be able to do it with less amount of people. We need to be more efficient. And we don't need to have multiple pieces out here to pretty much do the same job. We need to streamline our machines because we have to, because it's all dollars and cents. They've done it in the row crop business, right? Why have you got planters with auto shut off? Why have you got sprayers with shut off? <coughs> efficiency. It's efficiency driving it back. Uh, cost per acre is going too high. It's the same way in Florida. Why haven't we gotten that way so far? Reason behind, reason honestly, Europe's ahead of us. That's what we're seeing in Europe. They could have come with a with a, with a small mower and worked their way up to the big mower. They did. They knew the market where the market's headed. The market is headed to one tractor being able to hook to three mowers, each cover thirty foot of ground with one guy. He can unhook those mowers and put a hook to that big rake that'll now cover three swaths instead of two. Then he drops it. He can bail him around all by himself to one side. That's efficiency. That's where it's driving. Every bit of that. All your technology is coming into the forage side. Um, the GPS. The, the Pretty much all your data driven systems that you're using in your combine, your sprayer, your planter, your top, your shovel. Uh, their fusions now are, are doing uh, data systems as they're going through the field will tell you and keep up with what bale weight is, what moisture is, what number of bale it is, where it was dropped in the field, so on and so forth. That's where it's headed. I don't know where it's going, but that's where it's headed. So it's about efficiency. What I've seen is this company is so far ahead of a lot of other companies in that, it is great. So that's my take on it. Thank you all for y'all's time. I'm sure you guys have some questions for me. Yeah, if anyone has any questions at all, don't be afraid to fire. Uh, he just asked what about parts and distributors over here for us. But we actually have five distributors over here, ACI distributors being one, uh, that they just cover this area. Um, all our distributors have hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of parts ordered every year to make sure, sort of half forced by McHale, to make sure that we always have parts over here. Um, ACI have been fantastic in that respect because they've had their dealers take on a um, minimum stock and parts list. Um, so every single dealership has a minimum amount of stock and, stock and parts. If they didn't, if you had a part go down and they didn't have it, they'd go straight to ACI. ACI would have it down in the day max. If it was a problem that you had one part go and ACI just sold their last one the day before, it's actually McHale that gives everybody their rep, their area over here in the States. So that means all of our importers have a fantastic relationship with each other. So they just ring up the likes of Show Me Shortline in Missouri, um, Edney Distribute in Wisconsin, Cummins and Bricker up in New York, Beaver Valley over in Kansas, and definitely 100% someone's, they're all going to have the part, but they can all like next day air down to each other. So everyone has a fantastic relationship over here with them. Um, just actually to continue on that question, the other side of things we always get is service. No one knows about the machine. They're a European machine. Now, who's going to know about them over here? Well, we come over and do Louisville show every year, just finished up. And I'm actually in the middle now. Joni managed to catch me in the middle of it, but we're going around at the minute doing service schools. So we travel to every single importer, different areas every year, and bring in all the dealers that they have around the area. So we go through, we have all the machines there. We spend two or three days with every person going through uh, going through the machine, how it works, electronics, parts, hydraulics, everything that they need to know. 
And then when I come back in the when it's the end of in the springtime when the grass is back growing again, I take I go around and take all the dealers out, new dealers, old dealers, guys who run the machine since we came, guys who've only came came on in the last week, bring them out onto the machines into the field and show them how to run it. I start tearing it apart, do something wrong with it, make sure it messes up, get them to fix it. Because there's no point in having a good machine. You could have the best machine in the world, but if you have no service behind it, it's a complete waste of time. And that's one thing about the two McHale brothers. Like, as I said, our importers over here are fantastic. Um, Parts-wise, technically, service, they're very, very good. But McHale still always send me over here every year without fail. If I'm not able to come, they send another person because they have to know firsthand how the importers are doing, how the distributors are doing, how the dealerships are doing. If they're not providing the service that we say is sufficient, which is absolutely 100%, then it's no good. Something has to change. Especially being a company that comes over from Europe, we need to have our name perfect over here with every single machine. Doesn't matter if you buy a single bale handler office, or you have 15 combination machines. Every customer is the exact same way in the McHale brothers' eyes. So I hope that answered your question fairly sufficiently. Yep. Um, I can only give you list prices now. <laughs> uh, she's roughly in around the 130 mark. It's roughly around the 130 mark, 130,000. But you're looking at two machines in one, you know? Two machines in one, fully automatic, it does everything itself. So it's, and it's a, an investment, we'll say, at the start. But if you think about it in long term, if you were going through different machines over here and going through a baler every 10, 12, 15, 20,000 bales, and having a wrapper to do after that, so number one, your fuel costs, your tractor costs, your labor costs. Or you could have the one machine to go 100,000 bales and that's you practically the rest of your life to do all your work. Like in Europe, these machines go leave the factory, uh, go straight to the dealership and straight to custom operators, contractors. And they keep them up to about 110, 115,000 bales, which is roughly about four years in Ireland. Um, about four seasons in Ireland. And then after that, they go to the likes of the smaller farmers who keep them for an extra 50, 60,000 bales. Might have a small bit of work to put into them, like the chains and sprockets and stuff like that, common wear parts. But other than that, the, ch the machines are lasting fantastically for us. And that's why they are, because of the way they're built. Any other? Yep. Um, as I said, we've only brought out the single belt in 2018. The highest count machine that I've actually ran was 70,000 so far. But again, a belt is only going to last how long as whatever you put into it. If you put a rake arm or a tying arm or something through, she's not going to like it too well. Um, I probably should have mentioned that uh, when the picture of the machine was up there. Um, all the bearings in the chamber, all the bearings inside in the baler are all internal, bar the drive rollers underneath. So every, all the bearings in the back door, all the rollers in the back door, they have three bolts on them. So all you have to do is pop off the three bolts on the outside, take off your auto greasing line, and the whole roller pops out. So to change a full single belt or a full set of three belts in a machine, take about five, six hours. Yes, sir? Um, horsepower requirement isn't too big in that it should run perfectly on 60, 70 horsepower, but uh, because of the way it's designed with the weight distribution on it, but the only thing you have to look at again is oil flow. Uh, you'd be looking at to have about 2600 PSI pressure and looking at about 10 to 11 gallons oil a minute. You just have to make sure it's a constant oil flow. It'll do a four foot 10 bale is the tallest bale it'll do. Four foot 10 inches, yes. But still at a four foot 10 inch wet, hay, uh, wet silage, haylage bale, it's a very heavy bale. 